What's happening, YouTube? It's nocturnal. Hey, what a great night for boxing. And I missed it. Man, I didn't get to see it. I had to do, you know, had to look at everything, how, how it unfolded um, the next day. Because honestly, at this time of the year, just way too busy, preoccupied for me to actually sit down and enjoy a night of great fights. But from what I see and from what I hear, it was a great night of boxing. Um, John Pascal versus Bondu Jack was a close fight, exciting fight. Um, from what I see, from what I hear, it was a victory by split decision to John Pascal. Close fight. So maybe they get to do a rematch and I'll get to see that one. Um, but the big, you know, main event of the night was Gamboa, Yoriokis Gamboa versus Javanta Tank Davis, you know, in Atlanta. Um, I'm sorry, I, I missed that fight, so I had to go back and watch, you know, go on YouTube and put together as much as I could off of highlights and full fights, and I still haven't at the time to sit down and watch the whole fight in its totality. But I can already see, I can already see people throwing out this word, exposed. Exposed is a word that needs to be disposed. You got um, Lomachenko was exposed by Luke Campbell. You got Devin Haney was exposed by Santiago. You got Terrence Bud Crawford was exposed by the mean machine, uh, Kabalaskis. You got, you know, Errol Spence exposed by Sean Porter. Man, that word is played and it needs to be played to the left. You know what I mean? It's just one of those words that is too easily used without the credibility behind it. Now, people saying Javante Tank Davis was exposed by Yoriokis Gamboa. How? Last time I checked, Yoriokis Gamboa was a seasoned vet. Now, by my prediction, I thought that due to the fact that um, Gamboa likes to take punches, his defense is mainly just more offense, and he's been put down so many times, knocked down so many times, should I say, and when he did the no mas, uh, and then of course his loss to Terrence Bud Crawford was a ninth round knockout. To me, if you put that in perspective with Javonta Tank Davis's power and his explosion, I said that it would be a knockout by six rounds. Now, some people were saying that um, Gamboa was this huge underdog and it was going to be a blowout. To me, that didn't make any sense at all. I figured it would be a barn burner. It would be a firefight and nonstop action pack firefight for six rounds in which Gamboa would get knocked down. And um, proven wrong by Gamboa, who showed the heart of a lion um to last for 12 rounds before he was knocked out knocked out he said he suffered from an achilles heel tear in his tendon in the second round and he was basically fighting on one leg now my thing is this basically what he's saying is he's getting older and his body is going to break down faster everybody has an achilles heel so you know how ironic that this man literally tore his Achilles heel in a fight. But I'm saying that to say this, he's still a veteran, he's still seasoned, and he still has power. So if Gamboa would have um, starched Javante Tank Davis, it would have went against my prediction, but I wouldn't have been surprised. I mean, we seen Gamboa put Terrence Bud Crawford on baby giraffe legs. You know what I'm saying? So if he would have caught Javante Tank Davis early and surprised him with his power and knocked down 
Javante Tank Davis, I wouldn't have been surprised. I was only surprised that the fight went to 12 rounds. But people are saying that that's uh, Javante Tank Davis being exposed. How? The man knocked him down three times in the fight. He knocked him down in the second round, um, maybe the eighth or the ninth round, I'm not sure, correct me, because I know I'm wrong, because I haven't watched the full fight. And he knocked him down finally in the 12th round. It was a firefight. It was a good fight. It was a close fight. But I don't see where you can say Javante Tank Davis was exposed like he was fighting a tomato can. He was stepping up. He's stepping up to 135 to see if his power is going to transfer and transcend that weight division. Everybody's stepping up. Besides Lomachenko, when you hear these younger fighters that stepping up, the Devin Haney's, and Javante Tank Davis's, these guys are at the beginning of their careers and they're stepping up. Now Lomachenko has a very uh, deep amateur background fighting, so I can't say he's stepping up, but him fighting Luke Campbell and it was a close fight, to me that's not an exposure. That's just when your competition starts to get to the elite levels, you can't expect to see washouts, you can't expect to see blowouts, and you can't expect to see a total domination of fighters. I never, I mean, even with Mayweather, as Mayweather progressed in his career, you know, he, he, he got to the point, like, by the time he fought De La Hoya, De La Hoya wasn't a blowout, it was a close fight. Um, he blew out Arturo Gotti. He blew out um, Diego Corrales. He had a tough fight against Castillo. He had a tough fight, and he blew out, um, what's his name, Hitman, Ricky Hitman Hatton, but he didn't, he didn't blow out uh, De La Hoya. That was a close fight. Um... He didn't blow out Cotto. Cotto was a close fight. So, you know, I can't say he was exposed. This is boxing. I couldn't expect for Javante Tank Davis to just blow out Gamboa. I expected it to be a firefight, a close fight, a trade, punch for punch, blow for blow. But the younger, stronger guy is going to beat the older guy. But the seasoned, older veteran can still be crafty and be able to find a way to stretch that fight to 12 rounds. That makes sense to me. I don't see that as, as an exposure of Javante Tank Davis. Now, if if you can rewind the time, and like he, like like um, Gamboa was saying, imagine if I hadn't torn my Achilles heel. That's like saying, imagine if I wasn't 38 years old. That's like saying, imagine if I was a younger version of myself fighting Javante Tank Davis. Now, if you imagine that, and you take away the knockdowns, and you take away the knockouts, then that would have been an exposure because it probably would have been a fight that would have been a, close to a draw or even Gamboa might have won that fight had he had been younger. But we have to deal with reality. Let me, let me fix that a little bit, you dig? We have to deal with reality. You're 37, 38 years old which I don't even see, because see a lot of people trying to say, oh, he's old, I'm 40 years old. And yeah, in my prime, I was even a more of a beast. But if you take some young lion that steps to me and think just because I'm 40, it's gonna be an easy day for him. <laughs> that ain't the case, that ain't the case. So I never used that age thing. I, I wasn't gonna use the age thing for Pacquiao versus Thurman. You know what I'm saying? Um, who else they trying to just, it was just another recent guy they was trying to say because he was so old that was going to play such a factor in here. I can't even think of who it was. Um, it was just a recent fight. I can't think right now, right off the top of my dome. Um, but he's a little bit older and a lot of people, uh, there we go, Louis, Louise King Kong Ortiz versus Deontay Wilder. Everybody, well, oh, he's just old, he's just old. Look, man, Luis Ortiz is a threat today, tomorrow, probably to the day he died. You dig what I'm saying? That man is a beast. And not all men are created equally. Age is not always the determining factor. You know what I'm saying? George Foreman was, was in his late 40s, I think, when he beat Michael Moore and got that championship back after 20 years of being non-champion. I think, I think maybe, what, was it 20 years? 10 years, 20 years on the couch, gets up 40-something plus years old and knock out Michael Moore in his prime. 
Age is a factor, but it's not the determining factor. So even with Terrence Bud Crawford, he's getting up there in age. If he ever fights Errol Spence, the last thing I'm going to want to hear people say, oh, he was old. No, that's not going to be legitimate for me. I don't need to hear that. That's not a legitimate, legitimate excuse. So anyways, let's get away with the whole exposed because it just makes people come off as haters and, and, and bias. You know what I'm saying? And fanboyish. One of my um, subscribers was like, I never really heard the, the, the term fanboy until I started watching boxing. And I thought about it and I said, yeah, there's other sports where you have a fanboy mentality. But in boxing, I think it's different because in football, you might be a fan of a whole team. So, yeah, you like the quarterback, the receiver or whatever. But in boxing, you just got one man in that ring. And you just these guys, they just fall in love with that one man and they become a huge fanboy. That's why I like Showbiz the Adult because he's a fan of boxing. And I have to salute because I am a fan of boxing. I have my favorite fighters of old generations and new generations. So, yes, yeah, sometimes I'm going to be slightly biased, but balance. I'm just going to keep it real. I call a spade a spade straight like that. Terrence Bud Crawford, Errol Spence makes no difference to me. I like both of these guys. These are warriors. Gamboa, Javante Tank Davis. When you have two warriors go to war and one shows the heart of a champion, the heart of a lion, you got to expect that fight. If it goes 12, man, it goes 12. Who got exposed? Last time I was checked, I didn't see Javante Tank Davis get knocked out in that fight. If Javante Tank Davis would have gotten knocked out in that fight by Gamboa, then that word would have had more validity. I would have said, man, yeah, he got exposed. He stepped up to the plate to fight the bigger seasoned guy too early in his career because he's only 25. Yeah, he's knocking everybody out. He's knocking down tomato can after tomato can, minus that one guy that he beat. I can't think of his name right off the top. But he beat this one guy that, you know, um, Gave Lomachenko a run for his money. And, um, yeah, he fought. He, 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 he flew too close to the sun. You know what I'm saying? He, he dared to be great too early in his career. He got knocked out. That's an exposure. But to go 12 rounds with a vet, knocking him down three times, showing his, showing his power, showing grit. Both of those guys show grit, true grit. Both of those guys show metal. Both of those show show championship warrior mentalities where was the exposure who got exposed um all i seen was warriors fighting in the war period period i don't see no exposure there i see a tough fight i see a young guy that's adding wrinkles to his game that's learning to be more disciplined to say, hey, maybe next time I need to have my, my stuff on point so I'm not waiting to the last minute to try to cut off and shave off that extra pound and a half. Maybe I could have knocked maybe I could have knocked him out in six rounds if I hadn't have, you know what I'm saying, been a little bit less disciplined on my diet to where the last minute, the last hour, the last two hours, now I'm gonna go shave off this last little few pounds before I can rehydrate and start to eating again. That's a learning experience. That's season or vet. I guarantee you Gamboa learned that years ago. You see what I'm saying? So you got this young guy that's being, you know, uh, groomed to be great. He has to learn these things as he goes. But until he get knocked out or knocked down repeatedly, I can't say he's being exposed. I can just see that he's learning and going to be able to add this to his understanding of the game. And people want to compare, compare him to Mayweather. You can never do that. Mayweather still exists and he's still active. Possibly, potentially, he could still come back to boxing. I mean, you're not going to get another Mayweather for another couple of generations. Just like you're never going to get another Michael Jordan or another Tupac in another couple of generations. You can't expect to see these guys have somebody come and emulate and do what they did or do it better within the same generation it's not going to happen so when you're talking about adrian broner being the next mayweather get out of here with that when you're talking about javante tank davis being the, the next mayweather impossible these things don't happen within the same generation 
It's impossible. So anyways, it was a great fight. I can't wait to sit down and watch every single every single round, punch for punch, blow for blow. But I can already tell the, the, the little biased people start coming out, pushing agendas, pushing propaganda, pushing false narratives, trying to steer fans in one direction or another instead of just celebrating the fact that you've seen a great fight seen warriors clash and the best man was left standing period so on to the next Tyson Fury versus Deontay Wilder scheduled February 26th can't wait wow can't wait to chop that one up <laughs> cause that's the one that's the one you know what I'm saying? To me, Javante Tank Davis versus Gamboa was an amuse bouche. You know what an amuse bouche is? It's like an appetizer. You know what I'm saying? Javante Tank Davis is an appetizer fight. He ain't got nowhere near to being a main course fight. That was an appetizer. But the real deal, the five course meal, is coming in two months. February 26th, if all things goes according to plan, Tyson Fury rematching with Deontay the Bronze Bomber Wilder. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. That's the real deal. So until then, people, if I don't see y'all again, I hope everybody has a happy new year. And for everybody on YouTube who just watched this fight, let's try to digress on the word exposed. And let's really focus on the word congratulations and celebrations this is nocturnal thoughts if you're new to the channel go ahead and hit the subscribe button to all my new subscribers man yo i appreciate you to all my new subscribers yo i appreciate you to all my new subscribers yo i appreciate you hit the subscribe button thumbs up leave me a comment and i catch y'all hey Nocturnal thoughts, peace, salute to the real, death to the fake. I'm out.